Welcome back. Today things are actually pretty damn interesting because the PvE event is here. Plunderstorm came out, and for a lot of people, because there was PvP involved, well, it was instantly more of a blunderstorm, and for a lot of people, they just, you know, they didn't want it. If you didn't want that, I think this might actually be quite interesting to you. So, what was known on the roadmap as Time Running Pandemonium is here. It's called WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. I say here, we now know about it, and it's actually on the public test realm. That being said, it's not something you can play right now, because this is coming along with patch 10.2.7. And to be honest, in scope, this thing is gigantic. It, I mean, essentially, it is Mists of Pandaria, Season of Discovery Edition, with maybe a dash of, say, a Diablo season in it. There's more gear, like apparently way, way more gear, some really interesting powers you can add to your character through that gear. There's a legendary cloak that's got actually a count-wide power, and progression at the end of this will feed back into your main World of Warcraft account. So anytime you're, say, leveling up in this, well, you can be safe in the knowledge of that character will be something you can play in The War Within. And also, this is kind of canon because it does start off with Eternus, that uh, infinite dragon that we ended up working with in the Dragonflight expansion. This is, this is all pretty damn crazy. I'll do my gut reaction, then we'll break it down. Honestly, my gut reaction here is that I am very excited. This, generally speaking, this content is excellent. Mists of Pandaria is, a, is an excellent expansion. Throne of Thunder is one of the greatest raids they've ever put in the game. Like, honestly, Throne of Thunder is goddamn amazing, and you will be able to do heroic Throne of Thunder at level 70. Like, that sounds awesome. And mechanically, they are clearly cooking. We've got gear revamps that, well, just look broken in the amount of power that you'll be able to get. Of course, I mean broken in a good way. There's a system where gear can turn into currency that you can then spend on upgrades and account-wide cosmetics. And then also, they're pitching this as a different way to level. And even going through their blog post, a lot of how they describe it really does tell me that they're kind of leaning into the idea of people power leveling characters uh, via something like this. So honestly, I'm pretty damn excited. It's really funny that while Cataclysm Classic Beta is happening, we sort of have Season of Discovery Mists of Pandaria, albeit playing out on the Dragonflight client. Yeah, it, it, it's a pretty damn crazy chaotic time. Uh, now, what is crazy and chaotic and uh, can be a total mess is anybody's given add-on setup and another little setting that we found in the game tweaks. That video is coming out in a few days, but if you want to watch it right now, it is on Games. Over there, we post things as soon as they're done to our members. There's also multiple lore videos there that haven't made it onto the main YouTube channel just yet because the schedule's been crazy. Um, you'll also get access to the lore walking podcast that we do, and uh, we, of course, all like hanging out in our members discord it's also real talk like it is the best way to help out what we're doing with that said i think it's time to break down what wow remix is so the way that this works is you create a new character for this event that character will be playing on this event and it can only play with other characters that are a part of this event and it will be like denoted with a little symbol in your login screen at the end of the event though event characters will transition over to your regular modern account so you could level up a character on this and then just play the war within on that character. Uh, now, the progress that we'll carry over is things like character level and uh, stuff that you've collected, right? Like with the account-wide transmog. Um, there are some uh, like new unique rewards as well, but uh, yeah, that stuff will carry over. Obviously, any like gear and crazy broken powers, those will be staying with this event. And also, to kind of accelerate all of that, there is a legendary item with account-wide power that will essentially make any alts that you make for this event super, super, super powerful. Now, big picture, we've got to talk about leveling, we've got to talk about loot, and we've got to talk about content. So let's break those things down and understand what this event is. So, character levels and progression then. What they've essentially done is they have taken the whole level range of World of Warcraft, well, almost all of it, from 10 to 70, and they've mapped that across all of Mists of Pandaria. So as an example, Jade Forest starts at level 10, and it will scale all the way up to level 70. And that's along with a few of the scenarios and dungeons, right? So that's all the stuff that somebody on a free trial account will be able to do. And honestly, that's a pretty good first little dip into modern WoW. Then from 20 to 70, you've got Four Winds, Krasarang Valley, and the 5.1 campaign. Now, 
the 5.1 campaign is really good. It's the closest that WoW gets to, uh, I don't know, a sort of like political thriller. Maybe it's ugh, some Jack Ryan shit. Honestly, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Beyond that though, every five or 10 levels, you're basically getting some new dungeons, some new scenarios and new zones as you make your way through the expansion. Then with uh, the Dread Wastes being available from level 35. Of course, 35 is only half of the level cap. And by the time you hit level 35, uh, you'll be able to do the Heart of Fear dungeon. And at level 25, you'll be able to go into Mogushan vaults. Then at level 40, unlock the veil, and that means you can do the Terrace of the Endless Springs. So, a whole bunch of raid content that's done in a leveling up context, but then the patch zones are actually incorporated into the... Um, hey, like... That's going to be awesome. There's also that like PVP thing going on on the timeless level that you can opt into, so that's really cool. The Isle of Thunder though is the highest level zone. You unlock it at level 50. And what I love here, right, is you can go and do the campaigns. You know, the way that they say you can do the 5.1 campaign, the way that you're doing the Isle of Thunder, but instead of just, well, you know how it is in a World of Warcraft patch zone, you're sitting there doing all these quests, but you're getting no XP because you're already at max level. I think that this makes a hell of a lot of sense. And it does make me think, hmm, imagine if I could level up a character by, say, doing my Legion class order halls and actually have that be a properly supported thing to do. It would be neat. Anyway, at level 50, you get the Throne of Thunder. At level 60, you get Siege of Orgrimmar. And at level 70, you unlock Heroic Raids. Heroic Raids are going to, I think, be pretty damn insane. And, uh, well, that's because of gear. So here's what's going on with gear. It seems to be mad. In their post, they talk about how it's everywhere. Like, it's in quests, chests, creatures, bosses. The tone, the sort of understanding that I have of it is... It's a little bit like just when you play Diablo and gear just kind of falls out of everything. So there's a lot of gear. And as a part of that, you get customizable items and those items will take gems and those gems essentially have power that is a bit like a trinket. I'm just going to go through a few of them. So one of them is called Life Storm. Basically, whenever you use it, it calls down a bunch of lightning bolts. And during that storm, flowers grow around you and five seconds after they bloom, you get a big heal. Another one that looks pretty fun is Thundering Orb. It just turns you into an orb and you do damage to enemies within 30 yards over four seconds. 30 yards, like that that's big, that's massive AOE. Now, when you're the orb, your damage taken is halved and your speed is reduced by 70%, but you are immune to loss of control. Pretty neat, another one is called Oblivion Sphere. Basically, a big void orb like appears and it increases the crit damage taken by enemies within 15 yards of it by 50% for 10 seconds. I mean, crit damage taken by 50%. That's really big. And after four seconds, the orb explodes, then, uh, yeah, does shadow damage. So that's one example for meta sockets. There are some other ones. As an example, Hailstorm. Every three seconds, you build a charge of Hailstorm. When you reach 10 stacks, it unleashes it on enemies within 50 yards. So again, I'm just thinking about a pretty leveled up Diablo character, just kind of insane damage from everywhere. Anyway. Every impact of this then applies Numbing Cold, and Numbing Cold reduces movement speed and uh, damage dealt, but attacking removes a stack of Numbing Cold. Now, I only bring this up because they clearly have these kind of like, you know, buffs or debuffs that are shared by multiple different things. In this case, it's Tinker Sockets. Another Tinker Socket is Cold Front, which basically just gives your abilities a chance to grant all allies an absorbing shield, and it applies numbing cold to all enemies within 50 yards. And again, that's that numbing cold effect. So potentially you could be building up some like nice synergies with the people in your party. Uh, there are other cool examples like the uh, Tink Master's Shield. That basically um, gives you a shield that absorbs damage equal to 20% of your total health, and it regenerates if you don't suffer any damage for 10 seconds. That's pretty handy. There's also other really nice ones. We then have some cogwheel socks. And I mean, get a load of this. One of them is Blink. It just gives you Blink. Another one is Sprint, which is just like, you know, for a rogue, right? It increases your movement speed by 70% for eight seconds. And another one is Roll. So you can clearly do like quite a lot of customization of your character. This is only a small number. We don't know how many like overall slots will support this kind of thing. Hopefully many, and hopefully it can be really yeah, bloody insane. Now, in addition to all of this, we have our new legendary cloak. So basically the legendary cloak gives a buff to all of your event characters 
on your account, right? And uh, technically it's, a, it's an artifact, even not a legendary. And you actually level it up a little bit like an artifact. So you just, as you do stuff, you level it up. Maybe it's artifact power, not 100% sure. But basically you level that thing up and as it gets stronger, the buff that it puts on your other characters that also gets stronger. That essentially means that uh, if you start a, if you say start a new alt, but you've got a level 70 character that's been doing, say, heroic Throne of Thunder, well, you'll probably have a really big cloak, and that will make your alts super powerful, which Blizzard says will allow you to level them up really, really fast. And I've got to say, I really do wonder how crazy they'll take that. Could it be at the stage where maybe you, uh, you know, you could be soloing scenarios or doing some absolutely crazy stuff? Um, I, I don't exactly know, but I think it's a really cool design space for them to be playing with. The next thing then is rewards for this. So there are going to be some unique ones, but uh, the main thing that I want to talk about, they haven't really done a full reveal of all the rewards, but basically, Basically, the new system is bronze. And the way it works is this. If you get gear and you don't want the gear, you can convert that into bronze. Bronze is a currency. You spend it at the bazaar where you can buy upgrades or you can buy account-bound cosmetics. And from their description, this is basically a humongous number of, of cosmetics, like class sets, mounts, and it also is including unreleased colors of mounts. As an example, they showed off a golden Elgalon mount. So. Ultimately, that seems really cool, right? Um, we've never really seen that sort of using gear as a currency thing done within World of Warcraft. I know some other games do that, so that's uh, that's certainly interesting. I mean, we've had ideas like that, say the the Scrapper or the Obliterum Forge stuff in Legion, but, uh, but yeah, this actually does seem a bit new, a bit innovative. My key takeaways then for this, well, I, I mean, I'm really wondering, looking at the sorts of effects that players are getting, like, how hard will the hardest heroic be at level 70? Because it seems like the player power increases are going to be absolutely ginormous. It seems the amount of gear that you have is is ginormous. And, th like, I know when Blizzard says almost unlimited power, some of that is just going to be a Palpatine joke. But the vibes that I get are very much that your character can just be absolutely geared to the tits doing crazy damage. As for other things, well, the Rathian quest, is that going to be here? They actually removed it from the game. Um, for context here, in Mists of Pandaria, through the entire expansion, you had a legendary quest line with Rathian. That's what got you the cloak, right? So it was like, it was cool to get that player power stuff. But actually, some of the scenarios, some of the stuff that they put together for that quest, it was just really cool. So if Blizzard would be able to restore that, that would be particularly nice. Maybe if they could do that via this new legendary cloak, I mean, that would sort of fit perfectly. Then like power design, gear design, like what are the, what are they doing there? Are they perhaps testing things? You know, like uh, take the Mechagon patch. That was an example of Blizzard trying to shake things up a bit with what uh, what your gear could do. It really seems like they're kind of doing that at a very grand scale. I also wonder how fast will all of this be? The way that they talk about it in the blog post just makes it look like gear will be falling out of everything. And of course, I think this could be extremely impactful for the future. Though, let's not always just talk about the future. The now is also important. And when I look at this, it does actually look like something that I want to play now. So personally, I've got very fond memories of all of these raids. I do think that the likes of, say, Throne of Thunder, I mean, I think that is one of the best raids ever made. I think it really is fantastic. So being able to do that, like, experientially, that's extremely novel. And there's no way that we've been able to do this before, right? Like, yes, this is a, this is reusing content, but I think this is a smart way to reuse content. Um, at the end of the day, like, I don't think reuse is a dirty word, as long as we're getting new content, of course. But if you can basically have a small team have a massive impact using content that you've already made before, that seems like a completely reasonable thing for them to do as a dev. And in this case, a very large percentage of World of Warcraft's player base, they'll know that many people loved Mop and almost see it as the good old days. They'll know that uh, whenever Cataclysm was was happening for uh, the classic project that so many people just thought, oh, skip Cataclysm classic. Let's just go straight on to Mop. Like they, they know that people love Mop. Uh, they know that loads of people have not played this content. Um, certainly, this is not going to feel like an authentic experience or, or, you know, exactly like it was in the past, but it kind of never would have been because we've all sort of, I guess, grown, got better at the game, etc. Um, as players. But what I do think is that this will be a more complete feeling version of things than if we say just got time walking Throne of Thunder. So 
on that front. Uh, I'm excited. I want to dive into these zones again, relive good old memories, but then also see what they've cooked up in terms of the gameplay mechanics. And it's nice that rewards wise, they clearly have got plenty here. And it may not always be like brand new shiny things, but honestly, a lot of the stuff from back then was really cool. And being able to get those recolors is, uh, is pretty great. And also, if you haven't played Mists of Pandaria, I mean, yeah, you could go farm transmogs, your regular character, or you could play this and just earn a bunch of transmogs while you're also essentially playing a new feeling game. So honestly, I think this is all super smart. Now, as much as I'm focusing on the now, I do think this could be pretty impactful for the future. The first thing to remember is that both this and Plunderstorm have been described as experiments by Blizzard. And look, wh what is the point of an experiment? Wh what's all that all about? Well, generally speaking, right, you form a hypothesis and then you go and you try to test it via experimentation to see if you're right or not. I think that when they're doing this, they're clearly looking for, you know, they're clearly trying to learn lessons. I mean, if you take a look at Plunderstorm, you can see some design ideas, yes, obviously from Spellbreak and Battle Royales, but also even just little things from other games, like the way that you don't have to do tab targeting in the way that you normally would in World of Warcraft. It turns out the game does kind of support combat like that, and it can be really fun. So whenever I look at this, I mean, this bronze system, right, where you can turn the gear into a currency, is that them maybe testing something? Then this idea of like meta gems that have an impact similar to that of a big trinket. Is that a design space we could see Blizzard move into for a new expansion? I mean, there's been the whole talk about hero talents right now. You know, are people uh, excited for them or not? Well, what if in a future expansion, maybe instead of doing like a big build around system version of Borrowed Power, what if they do some of that and maybe take a little bit of the design space of your class sets and maybe they put that onto a meta gem or something? I, I mean, I, I don't know, but the point is, I think they could learn from this, and that's that's cool. Also, Blizzard traditionally had been so conservative. Like, they would never be the first mover on anything. And I know, yes, it it took them, what, seven years after PUBG to do, um, you know, do a Battle Royale thing and wow. Um, but I think you get the point, right? This previously, if you go back to, say, the Days of Shadowlands, like, Blizzard was a developer that did not listen. It was, you know, they, they thought that they knew best. They clearly didn't. And now things have truly changed. And yeah, I've got narrative quibbles with Dragonflight. You guys know that. But as an overall, like, game experience, Dragonflight is far more robust than, uh, you know, than other versions of modern WoW have been. So they've listened there, and now we see them actually trying shit that genuinely is new and different. Like, we have not had this before. This is truly new. The other thing that had me thinking of then was the new player experience. Because here, you can just level up a character to max in one expansion. And not just doing leveling zones, but also, you know, doing campaign stuff, right? Like, even take the um, the Throne of Thunder campaign. That was great! Like, you're you're doing spy shit with uh, Toshi? Toshi, I believe she was called? And that, that was just a really good campaign. 5.1, great campaign. Again, there's so much of WoW's, like, actually good content that just players never really see these days. And if you're a new player, you never really see Blizzard pay things off, right? Because you're just going through level-up zones, but you're never seeing the expansion stories that those level-up zones sort of eventually lead to. Uh, whereas here, you can just play the entire of Mists of Pandaria, and game story included, and hit max level. I think that's great, and I've got to wonder, could they do that for Legion? Could they do that for other expansions? Um, it certainly would be an interesting way to take, well, Chromy Time version 2. Another factor, I suppose, in this is, could they be testing what a new or different leveling flow for World of Warcraft could look like here? Like, not exactly sure, but anyway, that, not exactly sure, not exactly sure, and we need to see how this all plays out in PTR, but yeah, this is not exactly sure. We do need to wait and see how this actually pans out on PTR and live. My TLDR, though, is that this is a Blizzard that is actually trying new shit and uh, well, trying to earn our subscription back. Because there then is the question of value. I can say, ultimately, Plunderstorm was, is it targeted to my interests? I love it. It's really fun. I have like 350,000 plunder, right? I really enjoy Plunderstorm. So I'm obviously getting value out of my WoW sub for that. I am tinkering around doing things on, um, you know, on Modern. I do actually have plans to play Season 4 content whenever that comes out. 1027 also will have the Harbinger quest, the Troll and Draenei Heritage Armor. It actually says it'll have a new holiday event. 
Like, if you go back and look at the wording, it says new holiday event. It doesn't say that they're, like, updating an old one. So, don't really know what that is. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's, there's Season 4 and uh, The War Within Alpha, which, honestly, I think could be in a week? Two weeks? I mean, the image says that War Within Alpha happens before Season 4 launches, and we know Season 4 launches on the 23rd. So, my god, it is an absolutely intense time. There is so much going on, and wow. The part of this that could be the negative, though, is, uh, yes, this is a time-limited event. I think if Blizzard was wise, they wouldn't really lean too much on that on their marketing. Um, so there is the angle of FOMO to talk about. I think if you look at how this thing is designed, or at least, like, what their goals seem to be, I can understand it being a sort of time-limited event. And it's kind of similar with Plunderstorm, where really, I think, Plunderstorm itself, it doesn't, like, it does have depth, but it doesn't have the depth to be a long-term game mode forever. And I think whenever you design something in such a way that it's a limited experiment and uh, it's not something that you're kind of burdening yourself with uh, the upkeep of forever, because look, if they were to do an evergreen version of this, an evergreen version of Plunderstorm, then they always have to have people working on those things, or at least maintaining them. And they probably don't want uh, to do that. But if the framing of it being a experiment, and therefore something they don't have to commit to forever, if that means that we do get new, different, odd, wacky, interesting things happening within the Warcraft franchise, then yes, I'm all for it, especially when those uh, those lessons can be rolled back into the game in a way that perhaps is designed to be evergreen. I mean, you could take a look at this event here, the, the remix, and then you could probably work that into a Chromy Time V2 that would be a permanent feature of World of Warcraft. You could probably look at Plunderstorm and think, okay, could, uh, could you have an epic battleground that is inspired by that? Could you have, um, you know, bring in a little bit of crystalline conflict and just make some sort of version of WoW PvP that maybe would appeal to a far more broad audience? So you can see readily how these time-limited experiments will at least teach them lessons and may dovetail into future content, because at the end of the day, this was called WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. That does just suggest there will be WoW Remix other shit, which would be pretty cool. Okay, the most cracked thing they could do is WoW Remix Shadowlands, and they somehow try to make it right. Um, who knows? Who knows? I mean, Blizzard, if you make me, if, if you can get me to willingly go back to Corthia, then, um, well, I think you'll know that WoW Remix Shadowlands was a success, but uh, I do kind of doubt that. Anyway. That is it for today's video. Uh, right, Palular.games, head over there. You can watch some of our currently unpublished stuff um, with early access. Hang out with the other members, get the Lore Walking podcast, which I think is, man, it must be well over 40 hours of podcast content now. And uh, we are, in fact, cooking up some, uh, some new stuff over there. Okay, that is the deal. Let me know what you think about this. I'll see you next time.